Hey, I'm Jacqueline and welcome to In The Know. This is our weekly video show designed to keep you up to date on the most exciting innovations across the QuickBooks online ecosystem. Today, we're talking about updates to making 1099 corrections through QuickBooks Online. Correcting 1099 forms directly from QuickBooks Online was a top requested feature from you, accountants. And this year, as per IRS regulations, you have to file corrections the same way the original forms were filed. This means that all 1099 forms that are e-filed must also be corrected with e-filing. So our team has been hard at work and now all 1099 forms accepted by the IRS can be corrected right in QuickBooks Online free of charge. And now for the fast facts. This update is applicable to all US QuickBooks Online payroll and contractor payments users. Go to the 1099's filings from the taxes tab to access it. This has been available since February 14th to all users within the United States. If you find this update interesting or helpful, go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe for more. Let me go ahead and introduce you to Tiffany, who is the talented product manager behind 1099. Hi, Jacqueline. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, I'm Tiffany. I'm a product manager. I've worked on QuickBooks for the past seven years. Excited to share about 1099 corrections. So as you know, 1099s uh, that you have e-filed with QuickBooks can be found under this taxes section under the 1099 filings section. If you still haven't filed your 1099s, you can still do so all the way until May. Uh, by going to payroll and then contractors and clicking on that prepare 1099 button. But let's assume you've already filed your 1099s by the IRS deadline of January 31st. And we're going to kick it off by um, correcting a 1099 for Bruce Wayne. So if your 1099 form has been accepted, you will see that one of the potential actions that you can take is to correct it, starting with this link right here. If the 1099 has not yet been accepted, it's been rejected, or is still being reviewed by the IRS, you won't be able to uh, start your correction process. The IRS only accepts 1099 corrections that have been prior accepted. All right, so let's move on to correcting this 1099 for Bruce Wayne. Okay, the first thing that you will see is this uh, information that the business information must be the same as when you originally e-filed. And that means for you as your business, so the person who is sending and preparing the 1099, the business information must be the same because otherwise if you change it in QuickBooks, for instance, by going to account and settings and, and then you the, the new form, the corrected form, has different information than the original form, the IRS won't be able to match them and they might reject your correction, which is a problem. If you absolutely need to change the business information, you can do so, but the IRS requests that uh, a written letter be sent to them, which is why you have to do it outside of QuickBooks. Um, all the instructions are right here on that link, learn how to correct 1099s. But let's assume that the company information has not changed since the 1099 uh, was originally e-filed and that you know, you're good to go, so you're gonna click sounds good. Here, I'm gonna walk you through uh, two scenarios for Bruce Wayne. The first one is that the total amount for Bruce Wayne was not the right one. So there are two general reasons for this. The first one might be that you may have not selected all of your the right accounts in your chart of accounts, or you have not uh, mapped them to the right box. You can make those changes right here if needed. Another uh, common scenario, and I'm going to click next, would be that, for instance, you didn't record all of your expenses in QuickBooks before filing your 1099 and you know you realize I now need to add some more money uh, to what I declared on, on Bruce Wayne. You can go into QuickBooks and adjust your expenses right in QuickBooks and then you can go and finish correcting your form. So in this scenario that I'm taking here, you can see that my first previous total was 13,000 and that the corrected total is 13,750. So I created a new expense for Bruce Wayne for 2023 and QuickBooks is automatically pulling that new corrected total right here, which is really great. So in that scenario, you would be seeing your previous total, your, cor your corrected total, click next. So you can see uh, the form is going to appear here and you can preview it if you want to just double check that everything looks good. 
please note uh, that you know you will see that there is this little corrected checkbox that appears, which is normal, which is actually a good sign. And then the once you're happy and everything looks really good, you can click on e-file your corrected form, which I'm not gonna do right now because I wanna walk you through the other scenario. 1099 corrections are free. So you can make as many corrections as you need um, for anyone without fear of having to pay more. All right, I'm going to go back because I want to talk about another use case. This scenario is if you filed for a contractor by mistake. For instance, Bruce Wayne didn't actually need a 1099 for a variety of reasons. They incorporated. There could be a, a variety of, of reasons why Bruce Wayne might not need a 1099 anymore. And a 1099 was filed by mistake. In this scenario, you, what you would do here is you would remove the mappings right here. So you have you have the information on what to do here. If you file for a contractor by mistake, remove the accounts and head to the next step. So I'm gonna do just that. You click here on the garbage, <laughs> uh, remove all your accounts, and then you can click next. It might affect other 1099s, meaning that if um, you filed for Bruce Wayne by mistake, you may have filed for other people by mistake, but let's assume that's not the case for this scenario. Here you can see something that is completely different. So the previous total is still 13,000, but the new corrected total is, as you can see, zero, which is normal because that's what the IRS wants. If you filed by, for someone by mistake, what they want is a form that is pretty much like a voided form with a bunch of zeros in it, which is why it says that the corrected total is zero for Bruce Wayne. So we're gonna go next and I'm gonna show you what that form looks like. Uh, in this scenario, you know, Bruce Wayne uh, has, you know, has zero. And if you can, if you click on preview here, you will see that they do have that little corrected checkbox here and a bunch of zeros in all of the boxes in the 1099, which is just what we're looking for here. So I'm gonna go ahead and click uh, e-file and we're done. And that is pretty much it uh, for the 1099 uh, correction demo. Tiffany, thank you so much for being with us here today and for all of the incredible work that you and your team have done on 1099s. Well, I'm joined today by pro advisors Dan Luthi and Nayo Carter Gray. Dan and Nayo, thank you so much for being with us here today to talk about corrections to 1099s. Thank you for having us. Absolutely. Thank you. Well, Nayo, let me start with you. Tell me what it means to you as a firm owner and team leader that 1099 corrections can be made from right within QuickBooks Online. Oh my gosh. Let me tell you how amazing this is. So 1099, the process itself has always felt like one of those things we've just rushed through and there's always a mistake that happens. And then trying to correct those mistakes sometimes can be a pain in the you know what. Uh, so to hear now that we can make those corrections where we're actually processing the forms is like a mini celebration because it just keeps us from having to go into another app to do a correction or to try to figure out who the heck is doing corrections in the first place. Uh, so I'm excited about this because yeah, we always have a few corrections that need to be made. I'm not even gonna lie. It's just not a 100% foolproof proof process. So I'm excited. excited. Well, and I'll, I'll add to it. I mean, the part that's, that's exciting to me is now that the system is all together in one. And much like Niall mentioned before, like historically you would have it entered through QuickBooks Online and then you would have to go to a correction through another system. Now with all the requirements of it being electronically filed and the expectations there, putting it all together in one space does cut down on a huge amount of time and allows you to kind of see what's happened uh, with it and why there was an adjustment made and things like that. So that's huge, uh, huge time savings, but also just transparency uh, is critical. So really great to have it. Dan, when you say transparency, is that amongst your team or between your team and your clients? It's both, to be honest with you. Um, you know, we have a team of about 30 employees. And so when we were working on your clients, you're kind of all over the place getting things done, especially during that first month of the year. And so having that ability for someone to go in and look at the, what happened with that client or not and being able to 
then communicate it without having to go through a manager or someone else who, you know, potentially processed or finalized it just cuts down on a huge amount of time. Uh, and also for the client, it just allows you to, again, to be able to show not necessarily just proof of work, but just clarity in what was done and why, um, whether it's a change in a number or an amount that was paid or whether it's a change in, you know, it was an SSN before and now the vendor changed to an EIN, like they can see all of that context at their fingertips and it stays intact with the file moving forward, which is, which is really important. And they'll know where to get the corrected form if they need it. It's all in 100%. one place because that's the other piece. You make a correction. Now we got to figure out how to get it to you if you're not using a client portal. But this just simplifies that process because it's all in one place. 100%. Now, how does having everything all in one place help with your client communication? It streamlines it. You know, I, we have all um, been overwhelmed by technology and apps. So anytime I can minimize a click for a client, I'm all about it. You know, they recognize the QuickBooks app, they log in there to do things. So if I can just say, go to the left menu item, click this, click that, it's all there they're happy campers because I'm not sending them an email about it. I'm not telling them they gotta go here. They gotta go look there. They know, hey, it's gonna be a QuickBooks. I can just go in there while I'm in there, uh, send it off an invoice and can pull those forms at the same time. Yeah, they, you know, our clients are very familiar with the QuickBooks ecosystem, like just the ecosystem as a whole, being able to go in there and process payroll or you know submit payments or whatever it is. They don't have to learn something new, which I think is the biggest benefit for them because we change things all the time, right? Like on the back end, when we're working with our clients, like we're switching out, you know, this system for reporting or this system for quality control or whatever it is, they don't care. They don't want to have to dirt worry about any of that stuff. They don't have to worry now about a 1099 system. And so, you know, the login they have memorized, it's already set up. They already know how to move around it. It really just makes their lives a whole lot easier to have it in one place. We're coming out of 1099 season now. Nayo, as you look ahead to next year's 1099 season, is there anything that you would do the same or differently? So one thing we have added to our end of month process is to start looking for those vendors uh, before the end of the year. So if we're noticing that our clients are paying people with, you know, things like Zelle or pulling money out of the bank. We're asking way more questions like, hey, what are you doing with these funds? Is this someone you're paying for a service? We need to issue them a W-9 before it's time to track them down for the 1099. Um, so we're just being a whole lot more proactive. We really started that last year, but now we're kind of dialing it in, honing it in a little bit more because now we're really kind of fine tuning it for each of our clients because we know their habits a little bit better now that we're kind of watching them with a, you know, with that magnifying glass. <laughs> yeah. Well, and we're giving our clients kind of one of two options with it this year, whereas in the past it was kind of a free for all or kind of do whatever you want type solution. Um, for us, we're following up once you hit a $600 threshold, if they would like to fall under that bracket, if they want a more refined bill payment system, we'll actually set up a process where we don't pay vendors unless we have specific documentation from them. And so depending on how the client is, depending on their payments, their security levels or things like that, we're pushing heavy for the one of those two options just to make sure that things are more fluid and more accurate going forward. And it seems to make it so there's not as big a rush at the end of the year, which I think is something that's super critical. And Dan's, your, he, his team is so great at spend management. Like I learn a lot from Dan all the time about how we can modify and change and refine this process. So, you know, you're learning from the guy here. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> with this process and you know i i'm just i'm just thankful i'm in your circle dan thanks for Aww, allowing me to be thank you <laughs> i'm grateful in your circle too dan nayo thank you so much for being here today and for sharing all of these rich insights and stories thanks for having us bye thank you <laughs> and thank you for watching this episode i'm jacqueline the host of in the know and leader of pro advisor training and certification be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to this channel so that you don't miss a single episode. We'll catch you next time.